Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're tearing into the Guitar Hero game controller. Let's take a look and see what's inside. You know how I love to take things apart, see what's inside, and figure out what I can make from them. But it's also great getting to do things with this Les Paul Guitar Hero kind of controller because the manufacturer that originally created this went out of business. So now it's even more important to know how these things work and sometimes what you can do to fix them. You'll notice that we started by tweaking that lever and pulling the neck off the guitar and then we opened up the battery case and removed the batteries. It's an important thing to do before we start this next part which is removing all the screws. These outside screws are all the Torx screws, they're those star-shaped kind and you've got to remove one that's underneath that warranty sticker which means, yep, you guessed it, remove it and you void the warranty. But since I'm not worried about that, I moved on and I started taking the thing apart by separating the two halves. Once I got the two halves apart, I started disconnecting the sets of wires from the inside that keep the two halves together. There was only the one from the battery compartment to the main section that keeps them together, and the rest are all on the other half of the body. There's a nice capacitor attached to the battery compartment, which we're going to keep too. And I did want to point out a special thanks to Chris and Kendra who donated this guitar for me to take apart. We're just gonna go ahead and slide out this whammy bar on the other side. You'll see this little metal piece that's a potentiometer. The potentiometer is hooked to a spring which helps to bring it back to a base point. But the nice thing about this is you hook up your power and you basically have a variable resistor that you can use for another project. Moving on, we're gonna go ahead and remove the remainder of the screws on the inside which are primarily Phillips head screws. Of course, they make it easier once you're inside. There are just a few key circuit boards on the inside of this thing and they're important because the players have five basic buttons on the fretboard combined with a strum bar and a whammy bar that all have to be managed by these circuit boards and that's how you play the game. We're going to go ahead and carefully remove the remaining connections off the circuit boards and start to pull things out. You'll see this particular one at the end has a momentary push button switch which is great. I can use that in another project. And this has got two more push button switches on there which we can use for something else. The last big circuit board in here, the far one to the left in the image, actually is the best one. That's the primary act of electronics for this particular device and has some very unique aspects to it, which I really got a kick out of. It actually has an inverted F antenna for communication back to the primary control, which is great, but it also has an RF radio transceiver and a mixed signal microcontroller. But the really cool piece on that particular chipboard is something that's pretty fun. And that's the actual memory chip that makes everything kind of work. The really unique thing about it is it actually has a protective shield embedded in it to discourage tampering. What it basically happens is if you start to try to take that apart, it will know that you've disturbed the surface of it and it will actually start to erase itself. One of the components on that very same board also is what gives it its orientation sensing factor. That's what's necessary to get the bonus mode factor working on the game when you're playing it. And see here, I've moved on to taking the two halves of the neck of the guitar apart, and we're going to move on to getting the chipboard off of this as well. This particular circuit board has five little connecting points on here that when you push the buttons, complete the circuit connection for that particular part, and that's how it knows where you're pushing and when you're pushing it. You accomplish this by this blue part, which is the fret button pads. The fret button pads actually have carbon-tipped elastomers inside of them that when they push against the circuit board itself, actually completes that connection. You can see right here, those two little pieces that push out, they connect right there on that fretboard. Now all I have to do is pull this last little piece of circuitry off and this is on the neck of the guitar where it connects with the body. Once that's done, all of our electronics have been removed. Once you're done, you've got the following parts which you can actually work with in some other projects. We've got several of these little push button momentary switches which are great, a wonderful potentiometer which we can use in some other projects, a lot of screws, buttons, and things that we can use that way, and anything that you might want to salvage off the chipboards themselves which you can reuse depending on what your projects will be in the future. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.